Hi friends, I'm Dr. Ganguly. Hope you are doing well. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss about the NET versus PhD debate. And essentially, if you are somebody who is working in the Indian university system or aspiring to work in this system, you know that the University Grant Commission has made a new ruling that you can get the assistant professor job with only the NET exam. So this exam is something which is conducted by the UGC. Also, there is an exam conducted by the CSIR and you can give this exam and if you do well, you can aspire for assistant professorship. So this is a very interesting and questionable decision and I'm going to discuss this issue in detail today. Now, if we look at this NET exam, it's essentially an exam which consists of a general paper and a special paper. So the general paper is open to various candidates. The special paper is something which you can take in any specialized discipline. For example, it could be sociology, it could be English literature and so on. And of course, you know that the PhD degree is a completely different ball game. It's much more difficult to do. And the question remains as to why should a exam be enough for becoming an assistant professor. Now there are various views possible on this subject. One of the views is that just because a person has a PhD degree, he is not a good teacher. This is widespread. You probably know that your high school teachers were probably better than the teachers which you get in the various research type of universities who are more interested in publishing papers most of the time. So there are certain issues here which are philosophical in nature and I'm going to discuss this and then please leave the, your comments at the end of the video. Now the fact is that the PhD degree teaches you many things which a exam cannot teach you. For example, let's start with these things. Number one fact is that the PhD requires you to read a large number of books, monographs and so on. And very often you have to read primary literature, that is literature actually written by the people who essentially wrote those books. So you may have to go and read Newton's Principia or you may have to read all the books written by Charles Dickens and so on. So very often this kind of intense study is something which is a part of the PhD training program and it's something which is very important because the level of wisdom and knowledge which comes in many people who have done a proper PhD is essentially something which comes from this intense reading of work. So very often people have to read 100 or so books before they can embark on their PhD problem also. Now the number two is papers and essentially PhD students are required to read a lot of papers. You are going to be given various papers to read by your PhD advisor. These could be review papers to start with, but then you need to drill down into the literature. You need to find a research gap. You need to figure out what is the problem you need to do. So very often when you think like a PhD, you have to actually come up with various theories and hypotheses about a problem. So even if you are looking at a problem such as in literature or sociology or any of the humanities and social sciences, you need to read a lot of papers and books to find some thematic problem which you can look at in terms of certain type of literature, in terms of certain historical incidents which have taken place and so on. So this again requires a very high level of mastery of the subject to essentially look at all the literature and find a research gap and propose a hypothesis. Now the third point is the various ways you actually conduct research. So for example, you can conduct research using qualitative methods, quantitative methods, mixed methods. If you are dealing with qualitative methods, you may come up with various questionnaires, you may come up with surveys, you can come up with interviews and so on. If you are dealing with more quantitative met methods, you may have to do statistical modeling, you may have to do math modeling, you may have to do experiments. And very often nowadays in many fields such as management, such as social sciences, you actually try to combine both these methods. So some of your work may deal with doing surveys and experiments and some of your work may actually involve some level of math modeling also because what is happening is that a lot of mathematics is penetrating into the social sciences domain. So this is something which has been going on for years, particularly in areas such as economics. There is a lot of math involved, especially when you are dealing with the microeconomic types of field. So the question is, how do you learn all these research skills in just an exam? You may know some of these methods, but again, 
this is something which requires practice so you have to do a lot of practice essentially to become an expert in the art of doing research now the fourth point is can this kind of thing really be learned from books now you know in most cases that people when they think of disciplines which are relatively soft or which are learned from people such as leadership or management say that these things are essentially learned from a practitioner so most of the time you will see that these professions have evolved such that it has been taught by a practitioner so essentially research has to be learned by a practicing professor a practicing researcher and so very often what you do is that you look at what the researcher is, is doing look at what he's telling and you pick up various traits and skills over the years and these essentially make you a good researcher so for example the process of finding a problem how you go about doing the problem how do you write a paper how do you write the introduction section how do you write the method section how do you write the results and discussion how do you write the conclusion section who are the people you need to cite in your reference who are the people who you need to suggest as prospective referees of the paper these are things which you learn over a lot of time that is why the phd degree often takes three to five years if not more so it's very difficult to learn all these things just from books or randomly so in most cases i would say that having a phd advisor is something which is very important so now coming back to this particular exam i would say that of course while it has been told that net is something which can get you the assistant professor job do realize that in most cases there are going to be a lot of applicants for any faculty position so there are many cases where 50 people apply 100 people apply and even more and in that case there are going to be many people who are going to have phds so if you are somebody who is only net qualified is it possible for you to get a faculty position you need to think about that so i would of course say that the phd degree is still more or less mandatory for many faculty positions certainly there are some colleges which only have bachelor's degree and therefore it is probably okay to have a person with the net qualification to teach here but what if they got a guy who has a phd degree will they not take this person because do remember that research is something which adds a value as far as the education system is concerned it is not that the researcher has to do research but a researcher is better able to actually keep up with the time so if you think of some curriculum such as computer science or even in the field of finance or social sciences what was happening 10 20 years ago is more or less obsolete now things are completely different in many of these fields so if you have a phd if you have training in research then it is very easy to keep up with the times it is very easy to keep changing yourself because as far as most of the fields are concerned they are not static it is not a high school type of situation the fields are very dynamic the curriculum which you have today is going to be quite obsolete as chat gpt keeps coming into the picture and various ai and machine learning tools come in so finally to close i'm going to tell you one very important fact about research and that is about the concept of unknowns and knowns so when you think about a typical book a book is actually a known known and this is the knowledge which we typically study now as far as research is concerned it is a known unknown or in fact it can be a unknown unknown so these are possibly problems which you know or there may be even problems which you don't know so many of the time in research people stumble on solutions of problems which they actually didn't know existed for example if you look at the discovery of penicillin or the discovery of many pharmaceuticals or the discovery of diseases or many discoveries in material science and chemistry they often were not planned by the researcher himself what happened is that through a process of trial and error by putting in a lot of time in experiments and also for example if you are dealing with philosophy just thinking about different problems you stumble onto some philosophy or some theory which was not yet known to people so again how to think like this how to get trained like this is something which would require you to have a phd so i would certainly encourage most people to give the net exam there is nothing wrong in actually learning these skills formally but also if you get the job as a junior research fellow or something like that try to continue and get your phd degree because in the long run the phd degree is going to become mandatory as far as faculty positions are concerned because research is the way to go in the future so i'll end this video here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then